Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday morning. Okay, it is Tuesday morning, so bowling was last night, and I will start off with a little PSA here. Uh, the team chose our name last night, and Heirloom Acres 7445, you are the winner of naming our team. Uh, everybody agreed the Stars and Strikes was by far the best name. The second one that was close uh, was the 10, T-E-N-N, -N, pins. That was, that was, we were going between them, but it was, when we, when we picked, it was four to nothing versus two to two. So, uh, but those were the best. We had picked 10 of the best names to go over, but those were the two that made the final. So, Heirloom Makers 7445, please send me a quick email. I got a little prize for you. So, that was that. <clears throat> All right, now into regularly scheduled programming. So yesterday was quite eventful uh, in the political world. And I know we talk a lot about politics right now, but go figure, we've got one of the most important elections probably in history lying ahead of us. Whether or not the United States continues to exist or not is on the ballot. So we had three big things that came out yesterday. And the first one was, smallest of the three, Tulsi Gabbard endorsing Trump. Now, this really doesn't come as a real big surprise, considering how Tulsi Gabbard had destroyed Kamala Harris at the uh, 2020 presidential debates and basically caused her to drop out. Okay, But it does start making you think, and as I've said before, if you put Trump and Harris on a left-right clock, Harris is about 9 o'clock left, okay, as far left as you're going to go. Trump's probably at about 2 o'clock to the right. Kennedy's probably about, oh, 11 o'clock to the left. Tulsi Gabbard's about spot on noon, okay? Uh, you know, she's a former Democrat. She's not a Republican. She's I mean, a middle of the road, as middle of the road as you can get. And that's pretty much, you got to remember, the United States is a slightly center-right country. So you're going to start seeing a lot of these independents, I think, come along and say, okay, if these very moderate Democrats slash former Democrats are supporting Trump, that might be the way to go. So... You know, you think about it, in two business days, between Friday with Kennedy and Monday with Tulsi Gabbard, we've had two relatively big-name Democrats. Big difference between Democrat and liberal, okay? I want to say that. Join the Trump train. So, that's a positive. The second one was you got another view on the policies of Kamala Harris, okay? Now, remember, she won't put them out officially. It's not on her website or anything like that. But we've already heard some of her plans and, <clears throat> you know, taxing unrealized capital gains, raising the tax rate, uh, abolishing guns. You know, this is the stuff she's doing. Well, they kind of came out yesterday. They did it, of course, through surrogate because Kamala Harris isn't going to say it for herself because anytime she opens her mouth, she loses voters. Sheldon Whitehouse, okay, senator from Rhode Island, Democrat, basically, not basically, he did come out and say that Kamala Harris would support packing the Supreme Court, okay, adding, increasing the justices up somewhere between 13 and 15 if she's elected, which of course she's going to pick liberal justices. So that would be four to six liberal justices because they're butthurt that there's too many justices that were picked by conservative presidents. Uh, you know, it's funny. They talk about conservative justices and I just because you're picked by a conservative just, uh, president doesn't necessarily mean you're a conservative justice, okay? I mean, you look at it. We have Obamacare, 
because of John Roberts. Okay, John Roberts was a Republican president appointee. You look at what Neil Gorsuch or Amy Comey Barrett have done lately, and they've sided with the liberals. Amy Comey Barrett sided with the liberals in the citizenship testing by Arizona for voting. Okay, I don't think you'd say that's a conservative policy. But I want to give you as just an idea. Remember, Obama wanted to appoint Merrick Garland to the Supreme Court. They will appoint hardcore leftists. I mean, at that point, you know, Letitia James, maybe, for the uh, Supreme Court? Okay, this is the idea of what's going on. So, yeah, she wants term limits for the Supreme Court, and she wants to increase the amount of justices on the Supreme Court. Right now, the SCOTUS is the only thing that stands between us and some of the insane, radical leftist policies of Joe Biden that they've shot down, okay? I still think the decision on Roe v. Wade to send it back to the states, no, they didn't overturn Roe v. Wade. They sent, they sent the laws back to the states, so you can rule out the Democrat talking point of that one. The other big one is paying off all these student loans by the taxpayer rather than by the person who took out the loan, got shot down by the Supreme Court, even though Biden's trying and runs all over the place. Thank God his term's almost over, and we can put that insanity to bed. Uh, but these are her ideas, okay? And so as they come out, you will, of course, hear the far left go, yay, we're going to get rid of Clarence Thomas or something like that and put a bunch of, you know, liberals on the court. It'll never pass muster, okay? You know, especially once the Democrats lose both houses of Congress, that one will go to bed. But Kamal Harris loses the election, that one will go to bed. The biggest shocker of the day yesterday, well, let's put it this way, admitting it was the biggest shocker. Uh, a letter from Mark Zuckerberg, okay, CEO of Facebook and Instagram, Meta, whatever you want to call it, admitted that the Biden-Harris campaign, what's the right word here, threatened, strong-armed, colluded with, you know, however you want to put it, forced them to censor the truth, okay? Specifically around two big things, around COVID and around the Hunter Biden laptop story. I'm sorry, that is election interference. To censor a media outlet, okay, granted it is a social media outlet, from putting, from letting people share information by the administration at the time, by the campaign, the Biden-Harris campaign, is criminal, okay? <clears throat> now, Kamala Harris will inevitably come out today and say she wasn't at the top of the ticket. She wasn't the one making those decisions. That was all Joe's fault. Sorry, honey, you hitched your wagon to that horse. You're just as responsible. But Zuckerberg tried to play it off. Oh, you know, we have to pick, we have to do our job, which I agree. Okay, we don't, I want them to block pedophiles. I wish they would block the porn that goes on in social media. But to block factual information and to allow falsehoods is criminal. Okay. I mean, to block stories about ivermectin, but to allow the injecting bleach farce to be posted. Yeah, sorry, Mark, your hands aren't clean, okay? Uh, we know which side of the toast you butter your, you know, you butter. 
But the Hunter laptop one got even worse, where the Biden-Harris campaign had strong-armed, forcibly suggested to Zuckerberg to squash that. And Zuckerberg comes up and says, well, the story was there and we had it, but and, and but we wanted to fact check it before we were allowing people to talk about it, allowing people to post what they had on it. You didn't fact check the injectable bleach. You didn't fact check the very fine people. You didn't fact check the... Uh, whatever you call them, fools or wimps or whatever the comment that, you know, you didn't fact check any of that. That was fine. Okay. No, sorry. You're guilty of election interference too. No, we don't need the internet to go back to the wild, wild west. Okay. Not that it really isn't anyway. You look at all the memes and the stuff and the Babylon B and things that are put out you know, that people actually believe deep fakes and all this, okay? And then we can't get the truth. I mean, remember, the Biden campaign was saying it was cheap fakes that were showing Biden tripping and falling off bicycles and couldn't climb stairs, you know, that Biden was in great health, okay? You know, and the White House was calling that cheap fakes. So, you know, the lies that are getting through and the truth that is being squashed, that's a problem. And I hope the Trump campaign is watching this and listening to Zuckerberg admit guilt. I mean, he it, it's in writing. This is a letter that Mark Zuckerberg sent to Jim Jordan. So all this that you look at, the wheels are starting to come off the, the wagon of the Harris campaign. Whether or not the undecideds, what few are left in this country, listen to these facts and go, no, you don't put 13 people on a baseball team when you're losing. It, that's not how the rules work. No, you don't change the you know, look look at the U.S. Constitution and erase parts that you don't like or mark them out with black marker because, well, in this administration, we're not going to follow this amendment, this amendment, and this amendment, okay? It, no, it doesn't work that way. This is what we've got. The campaign of smoke and mirrors run by a clown that nobody likes and the wheels are coming off. This is a good thing, especially when we're starting to see prominent Democrats go, we don't want that candidate. Especially when you had ABC, Jonathan Carl and George Stephanopoulos come out yesterday and said, Kamala Harris is so much like Ronald Reagan, you know, trying to move her, say she's a moderate candidate, a centrist candidate. No. I laughed when I saw that. Ronald Reagan hated communism. Couldn't stand it. Despised it. Fought his entire life against communism. Kamala Harris? Well, she gives her full-throated support to it. Pinball out.